We are back to Real Talks with Pinks. Um, the most popular questions that people ask, or rather the most popular question that over 30 year olds get asked is, when are you getting married? Do we celebrate singlehood enough? I dare say no. We have a special guest today, and uh, she's going to introduce herself, and then I will introduce the topic of the day. Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for having me. Mm-hmm. That's all. That's yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Thank you. There's a certain expectation on society, on young women, especially those who are over 30. The expectation is that you get married, have kids, especially when now you have a career or a job. Uh, so today we are going to discuss what happens now when you break off an engagement. Yes, that's our topic for today. <laughs> Let's get straight on to it because it's a sensitive topic. I will be referencing my experience as well so that Metakani feels very much comfortable. I have been in that bracket as well where I broke off an engagement. Met, Hi. tell us your story. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you would ask a leading question. But yes, uh, this was 2014, mm-hmm. December of 2014. I was 24. And I was engaged. The parents were very happy. The dresses had been bought. The invites had been sent out and we broke it off. Wow. You were at an advanced stage. It was um, two weeks before the wedding. Oh my God. So in my case, <laughs> obviously this is your story, but I will lead you of with course. my story. Yes. Uh, obviously you meet someone, you fall in love and you think they are the one. And then you start seeing some stuff. Uh, most of the time I know women will just be dismissing them off as, you know what, it's okay, we'll see, we'll fix it, whatever happens. You also see some things in yourself and you're like, am I compatible with this person? But then you continue and the parents go ask for your hand in marriage. When did you know that he's probably not the one? In, I think, was it April or March? But I think it was Easter. Mm-hmm. Yes, uh, we had gone on a church thing. And there was just a lot of things that I didn't like. Bear in mind, he wasn't a bad guy. He never did anything bad to me, but there was just those like, uh, we are not, the things that I like and the things that he likes are not very compatible. So obviously when it's March and you t- I told my mother and a couple of my friends that I don't think I want to continue. To continue, yes. And everybody kept saying, no, it's pre-wedding jitters. Every bride feels like this. You're just nervous. You get over it. And the date kept throwing closer that it's now June, it's August, it's September, and I'm still feeling like, no. So the Lobala is out, and the dresses are out, bridesmaids <laughs> chosen, everything ready, two weeks yeah. before you decide, I'm not ready, I don't want to continue. Uh, two weeks before, he actually dumped me. Oh, okay. But I think he was, I don't want to call it a stunt, because that's like I'm dismissive of his feelings, mm-hmm. but we were fighting a lot, and then he broke it off. And everybody thought I'd feel heartbroken. And I just felt this huge sense of relief. So then he came back two, three days later, wanting to work it out. And I knew like, no, like you just did me a huge favor by breaking it off and I'm not going back there. So then when he did that, it was suddenly my fault. No, he's sorry, he's apologizing. Why won't you take him back? He's a good man. And I kept saying he is a good man, but he's not my good man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's just not my person. No. So how did you break the news to your family that we are no longer co- continuing with the with the wedding? I told them the I think the day he broke it off was a Friday. I told them that Friday and Sunday when he came back, the, 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 obviously the family meetings. Because at that point, once you break up, the family will have to get involved. Yes, obviously. So there were the meetings and I kept saying no in the meeting. Imagine this is... The elders, the grandmothers, the aunties, <laughs> everybody is rooting for us because, like I said, he was really good to me. And I was just there. I think there was my granddad who was really on my side, like, let's not force her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So tell me, in the communication, telling the family, the friends, and everyone else who knew you were going to get married, there's usually this shame associated with breaking off an engagement. In my case, I did it because I had seen a couple of red flags and I thought, okay, we might not be compatible. And, uh, but there's still the shame. God, I remember I'll quote one friend who's probably watching friend, you know yourself. <laughs> like I'll quote Weber team. She said to me, 
Ibile haku kina on laka ang banna ka ofela ba bule. Like literally, that's what she said. She was just like, you don't break off an engagement. But I'm like, but you guys usually say when you see the red flags and you're not too sure, you must do it before the wedding so that you don't get to regret and now uh, break off a marriage and then now divorce. Yeah. Uh, so from family to friends to church people, we were church people. <laughs> they were like, ah, Miguel, you don't know what you want. So the shame associated with breaking it off or people yeah. saying you don't know what you want. How did you deal with it? Okay, first, how I told everyone else, this is no longer my immediate family, but friends, uncles, the people who were coming to the weddings. So I, you know those WhatsApp broad, broadcast, mes- broadcast messages? Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, so I wrote a broadcast message and texted everyone. I think it was like oh, okay. 50 people. Like, you know how a publicity statement reads? Yeah, it read like, uh, we are sorry to inform you, but the wedding of Mama Mama and Tagani will no longer be... Proceeding, please bear with us during this difficult time. And then I shut off my phone. Wow. <laughs> wow. And then two days later, when I came back, there's this, I think it was like 200 messages. What's happening? Yeah. So obviously there was that. For me, I think it was the blame that he, he didn't do anything wrong. He doesn't hit you. He treats you well. He's a good person. He doesn't cheat. So I had nothing to put on the table except we are not compatible. And everybody was just like, you're breaking off Why with now? a good man because you're not compatible. And they thought I was going through, there was that, ah, you're just going through the phase, yes. you'll get over it, yes. Mm. But I think at some point people started accepting, okay, this is it, this is it, yes. But I, I was never ashamed, honestly. Mm-hmm. Personally, I wasn't. I don't know how my parents felt. Because this one time, oh, also Nebula Mozi. Wow. Maybe so handsome. You don't know how to You blew it off. <laughs> so this one time I was walking behind these two women and they were gossiping about it because it became a thing. Of course. In the village, yes. Mm-hmm. So they didn't see me walking behind. And mm-hmm. obviously a lot of bad things were being said about me. Mm-hmm. At some point I'm like, hello, but um, both because I'm right behind you. So it, they were like, oh, oh, sorry. So it was just that whole thing mm. yeah mm. but I, I wasn't ashamed <laughs> because you knew that was the right thing to do it was for both of us mm-hmm. yeah. for both of you i like it when you say for both of you i think so many people are ashamed to say this is the right choice for both of us mm. because you really know when you are not actually feeling it hey what about the fear there's also there's also the fear when you're a woman people look at you as she knows what she wants will she ever get married because we put Marriage as this trophy. I always say to people, So now, <laughs> people are on your case. Yeah. People always ask me, Why for me it was 10 years ago. Yeah. Um, what do you think? Now you're over 30. Remember what you did? <laughs> I get that. <laughs> yes. So guys, you guys are to the fear. Yeah. That, what if you are a romantic you may want to get married I don't know mm-hmm. but people are always looking at you like what if it never happens now how do you deal with that fear <laughs> okay so it, when we were, we were engaged I had an ex-boyfriend who also wanted to marry me mm-hmm. so I told him no nah you know I have my person we're engaged like so I have actually met him in the mall and he's like ah, I don't know how to get a girl and you're like okay buddy <laughs> Yes, and then of course I do sometimes have that like, oh my god, what if I never get married? Mm -hmm. But as fearful as I do sometimes become, I still know that I did not want to marry him. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. And in terms of Hongal and Yellow, like we do, we absolutely do. I've never been like that. I do want to get married, but I also do want to be happy. So Mm -hmm. I would never compromise happiness just to say, Mrs. Mama. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I don't want to be Mrs. Mama, but it's also good. When you're happy, you want to be Mrs. Mama. Yes. (laughs) So, I mean, obviously... Uh, you are going through this phase. Now you need to love yourself again. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think for me, after I broke it off, I cried for like a whole week. It doesn't mean when you initiate something, you won't feel the pain. I yes. cried for the whole week because I was just like, this is it. I've made my decision. Um, now you have to love yourself again. You have to celebrate yourself again, but you still have the stairs. How do you go back now to, like I said before, I feel like we don't celebrate sinnerhood enough. It's sort of like when you're a young woman, you're waiting just to get married. You go to school, you buy a car, you get a job, 
you're just waiting. It's as if you're not even living, you're yeah. waiting. So, you're auditioning. <laughs> yeah, you're like auditioning yes. to find someone now for you. How do you celebrate yourself and just love yourself despite everything that happened? Okay, first of all, after I broke it off, I didn't cry. Mm-hmm. I went out with my friends and had more than a few drinks. <laughs> <laughs> And I wasn't sad, but and then as the months passed by, I realized I missed him. I didn't miss him as a boyfriend, but I missed him as a friend. He was a really good friend. Mm. And I miss, like, you know, when someone is your friend, you have shows that you watch together. Then I'd be watching them and there's a joke that I want to share with him. I'm like, oh, I can't do that. <laughs> you can't. Yeah, like that. You that are no longer close. friends. We are no longer friends. Mm. So I then moved out of home. I feel like I needed to experience the full might of my singlehood. <laughs> And then I lived alone, and it was a great experience. Okay. And I enjoyed, I enjoyed being single. I mm. still do. Yeah. Oh wow, <laughs> that's amazing. Uh, eligible bachelors. <laughs> <laughs> no, that is a good one. If you are watching and you have a similar story, share in the comments below. What was your breaking off engagement story? <laughs> because I feel like this is one of the topics we don't talk about, but it happens a lot. Yeah. I'm sure when I said we must talk about your story on the show, you were like, uh, so you can also relate because you're feeling like, oh, I'm probably the the first or the second one. There's like not so many people. Yeah, I did. <laughs> no, I feel like there's so many people just that society is shaming us because they're looking at you like it will never happen for you. You don't know what you want. So I'm for celebrating women who say, no, 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 this is not it rather wait until you see like the real thing like you want more i think my, the problem with me is that people just like i didn't have those you know people will say i broke off my engagement because he was abusive i didn't have a huge reason i just wanted more and when you're a woman that wants more it's like who does she think she is to want like settle for us on the table mm. so like nah mm. not i know me. Yeah. i also didn't have a you know that abusive type of story mm. but when someone is just not the one you can feel and then later on you realize actually there's the one somewhere like for me i found the one somewhere <laughs> So honestly, I just wanted to do this video to say, for single people, I know it's so, so hard. People are always like, when is the big day? But at the end of the day, to be honest, so honestly, this is a power to single people video and no shame to married people. I am married. We love marriage, but I just don't like the idea of us always shaming people for being single. It is not a bad thing. It's your time to enjoy. And I think we didn't even discuss some of the things that you do when you are single, even before you can meet someone. For me, I feel like I can relate because I've been on both sides yeah. and we don't celebrate the singlehood enough because we know that some of the things you can't do when you are now married, but you can do when you're alone. True. I have had friends, like I live alone again now, mm -hmm. and I was talking to a maid friend. She's very happy in her marriage, but she's like, oh, you're decorating your house and you're just buying all those very bright colors that you love. I can't do that with a husband. I always have to constantly think that I don't live alone. And it's those small things that you can do when you're single. I can take a trip to anywhere. I can do so many things. You use your money alone. You don't have to consult. Yes. Mm. I love that. <laughs> That's a big one. And we, we underestimate it. It's really, really a big one. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, there's also the, the double income that you get when you're married. <laughs> More responsibility and kids. Okay, no, I don't want those. <laughs> so what do you say to people who've broken up their engagements, but they're still at the phase where people are shaming them or they are feeling fearful or they feel like, oh my God, I'm not too sure. They know it's the right choice, mm -hmm. but because we live as a society, Obviously, we are always scared what people will say. What do we say to those type of people? I think for me, it's better a broken engagement than a broken marriage with kids later on. Wow. Wow. That's a strong statement. Better a broken relationship than a broken marriage with kids yeah. later on. Your last words as a single person <laughs> who is saying I'm also a hopeless romantic. It doesn't mean I'm cutting uh, off men. Oh God. <laughs> of course. <laughs> I do love men. <laughs> I don't know. I think I'm still enjoying being single, mm -hmm. but I'm, I'm less selfish now with my time. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. so, what does that mean? You're less No, in my 20s, I knew for a fact that I don't want anybody to stay in this piece. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes. okay. I'm less selfish now, but I still feel like I want to be married and happy. I just don't want to just be married. Oh, okay. Yeah. You want the full happiness. I'm in love with you type of love. 
you know me like I'm hopeless with these things I want that whole I want the fairy tale <laughs> Guys, this has been fun. I think it was just a, a lovely chat. Thank you so much for sharing your story, Meta. Thank you for having me. It can be easy. We live in Maseru, it's a small town, <laughs> and there are problems of small town. Yeah. <laughs> But thank you so much for coming. I've had so much fun. <laughs> thank you guys for watching. Like I said, please share your story below and tell us how you feel. If you are single, if you are married, or if you feel like you did not enjoy your singlehood and suddenly now you are in in a relationship. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next episode. Uh, bye for now.